Aloha, everyone. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, host of Sister Power. Sister Power guest June E. Dennis from Arizona is a sister from another mother. <laughs> we have been close girlfriends for over 20 years. June served on the staff of the NAACP Image Awards, event coordinator of the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo in Los Angeles, which is the only national touring African-American rodeo, serves to educate all people about the history of black cowboys and currently vice president of Sisters Empowering Hawaii. Our topic for this afternoon, the world of Junie Girl, the art of loving people. Mm -hmm. Norman Vincent Peale wrote, one of the greatest skills in all the world, That's perhaps me. it is, the supreme skill is the art of loving people. In Corinthians chapter 13, there is a stirring passage that concludes by saying, so now faith, hope, and love abide these three. But the greatest of these is love. To live effectively, we must master the art of faith. We must master the skill of hope. We must master the supreme genius of loving people. Please welcome founder of the world of Junie Girl to Sister Power. Thank you, Sharon. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm so excited to be here. You've been doing this show for a while, and we've got a long history. And I just have to tell you that the world of Junie Girl, much like Sisters Empowering Hawaii, Hawaii's foremost women's empowerment organization, is founded on the principles of empowering other people to be the best that they can be. That's what the world of Junie Girl is all about. Now, that is truly a compliment, and I love your logo. I love the Junie Girl logo that they're going to show us in, in a few seconds here. Uh, and, and tell us more. I just... The world of Judy girl is <laughs> just absolutely wonderful. The art of loving people. Just well, first of all, before we go into the Judy girl, let's just say happy Father's Day to our hubby. Yes, who makes all things possible for my life. That's for sure. And so uh, and we want to say too. that for Tommy as well. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and happy Father's Day to, to all, all, the, fathers. all the fathers out That's there. Right. We got our sons, their fathers. We want to think and think about them too. Yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, me, myself, and I, that's the three of us. I, I'm going to tell, about, tell you about myself based on World of Junie Girl. Uh, growing up, um, I was raised in South Central Los Angeles, but when I was there, it was just Los Angeles, just a town. And I was uh, taught by my community uh, and my parents. And what I learned was that you are raised by a village. And I, I think I come from a generation where community was a priority, more so than today, only because people didn't have block walls and, you know, you walked around everywhere. You went to elementary school, you went to junior high, wherever you went, you were walking. So you, you met your neighbors in your community. And my community really taught me to be a good citizen. So my parents, of course, did as well. But mm, it, the community at large was base, basically moving in that direction. And I feel like the world of Junie Girl um, was inspired by, as I said, just the empowerment of people, but also um, my mother, who Joan Fletcher, she inspired me. She's one of the most kindest, compassionate women. I'm so blessed to have my mom and to be able to say those things about her. And she taught me how to be kind. And if you knew her history, if you knew the life that she lived, which many of us have difficult lives, you would be in awe of her sweet spirit. And then there's my father, June Etta Fletcher, and he was a wonderful human being. He was the disciplinarian. He taught us to be respectful of authority, uh, to be people of our word. If you say it, let your word be your bond. Unfortunately, he was also an alcoholic, so that illness caused him to make some bad decisions. But all in all, what I learned was I found a way to see it and recognize that you can still see the love in people even when it's hidden or just kind of not there, you know? And, and that was a blessing. And then I had my godmother, Winnabelle Holmes. She was a socialite. And I was, because of her, I was uh, introduced to arts and culture. And she would always say, you, don't ha you may not be able to change the world, but you can make a difference in your circle of influence. And as a result of that, I've just always been keenly aware of that. And I've always had a heart for people. So, you know, 
That was the inspiration for the world of Junie Girl, and it just developed really from there. Oh, I love that. You know, it, I have a saying uh, on my refrigerator, love, the, great, the greatest medicine. Mm -hmm. It and is. It really is. It is. It really is. And so Junie Girl, you know, we go back 20 years, and we have a picture of you and I doing our, look at that. That's one of our That's first events ever. That's one of our ever. first events yeah. at Wildlife Country Club when yeah. you and I came together and I <laughs> gave you a gift. And you have been by my side. You and I must say, uh, Dr. Patricia Jones Besson as yes, well. We that's must bring our, our girlfriends right. into this too. But I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you for always believing, always being there because it's not easy doing an event alone. Yeah. So that's why Absolutely. I can't wait to hear more about Junie Girl. Well, um, I'll tell you, I, I, I share with you who inspired me and then. Um, the, the, the efforts of, this is a singular mission. Let me just get my thoughts together. This is a singular mission, and by that I mean it doesn't require anyone else. You can do this. You can be kind. You can think about someone else. You can be humble and just kind of look around and see where it is that you can be a benefit to people. That's what the world of Junie Girl is about. And I often tell people, when you arise in the morning, if you would just, just within yourself, first of all, be grateful for a new day. And if you have a wife, a spouse, a significant other, your children, whoever it is, make it a point to say something good to them. Make it a point to deliver some joy in their heart. Say something that's going to encourage them because when they walk out the door, they're going to be doing that same thing. And the more of that that we do, the better because right now the world is. It's a lot of hate and discontent, and you can see it everywhere. And I'm not saying that there aren't tough things going to be happening, but individually, just you, me, just us, we can be changers, difference makers, if we would just consider being kinder to people. And that's what the world of Junior Girl is all about. So how was it developed? Well, um, <clears throat> let, me just, let me just check something. I wanted to make sure I tell you the right thing here. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. This is all live and real and wonderful. We're just having fun and talking story. But while you're looking at that, we, we had a conversation over lunch that um, I think the, the, our audience should always remember. And I said, we, we want to blame things on the millennial, millennials. Yes. And we want to put them down and say they are this. And we, you and I had the conversation. It's a people thing. Yes. It is not that they feel entitled or they are not responsible or they are not courteous. No, people, this is a skill set that we all should want to be kind to right. one another. And it requires a human being. It's not going to happen over the phone. It's not, I'm not that you can't call and say something good, but technology has sort of diminished our capacity to touch one another. And that's what we need to get back to because we're humans. This is what we do. You cannot get love from the phone. You can't get it from the television. You have to touch someone and love them. And it requires people. And that's a people skill. And we're all born with it. We are born in the world to be with other people. But it's just something that we have to work at and bring back, I think, because it's just easy to, it's just easy to get into your comfort zone and, and just kind of leave it at that. But um, you asked me about developing uh, the world of Junie Girl. Uh, the truth is it really developed me because somehow I learned as a young girl that I had the gift of encouragement. And I just like people. Yeah. And I know my mother was like that. My father was like that. I have to share sometimes my husband and I'll be out and, and I'll just go talk to somebody. I'll just say something and he'll say, you'll talk to anybody. And I will. Now, don't misunderstand. I am cautious. I am aware. I don't try to get into anyone else's space. But I found that most people are nice. Most people are kind. They are. Most people don't mind if you're in the grocery line and you, you pop over and you say something. Or you, I ask people oftentimes, why are you popping on the fruit? You know, what are they trying to do, the watermelon? Or the, yeah. And they just love telling you the story. And usually it has something to do with the, when they grew up. And so it resonates something positive and something nice. And when it's all said and done, you just walk away. But 
I don't know. It just makes you feel good. It, it, it really is a blessing. And, and you don't necessarily know it that way when you do it. But when you touch people with kindness, it, it, it really does change the way people feel about themselves. And it helps you feel better about yourself. It does. And I tell people, uh, my girlfriends or whoever I'm speaking with, every morning I put my armor on. Mm -hmm. Every morning I Absolutely. have my devotion. And I ask the Heavenly Father, what would you have me do today? Absolutely. And that's what Juni, the world of Juni Girl, the art of loving people. people. Yes. This is what resonates with me. Yeah. And, you know, we all come from something different. I'm a believer. I'm, I'm, I'm very clear and concise about that. I'm very comfortable with that. But I know everybody's not. But it doesn't mean anything. We have to respect one another because we're all different. We live together. And it's not wrong to be kind. It's not. It's the best thing to do to build bridges and to bless people and to help people. I just feel like the greatest equity in the world is the heart of a person. And you just can't buy that, and you can't mistreat that. When you mistreat it, as oftentimes, you know, we're all born into a family. Mother, father, sister, brother. When you're born, you're just this beautiful little child. You develop based on what you're being fed, just as you were talking about the millennials. No, we can't blame them for all of this. No. They're, they're just reaping what we sowed upon them. Not everybody, but for the most part, they're just learning in their era, just like we learned in ours, just like our parents learned in theirs. But we do have to put forth more effort in being kind and touching people and trying to make a difference in people's lives because you never know where people are. Your smile. You taught me something several years ago when I moved from Oklahoma to Chicago. I told you that I was introduced to a lot of homeless people there. I, have, I rarely saw that in the town that I was in in, in Oklahoma. but I didn't know what to do and I wanted to do something and you and I spoke and you suggested that I just purchase some little small gift cards and you know Subway, McDonald's, Dunkin Donuts and when the time is right I could present one and so I, I took you up on that and it was a blessing I would jot a little note and say something good and then I would always introduce myself I would ask them their name I'd ask them where they were from and I just took a few minutes to, to make it, them feel human and I don't know who got the greater blessing, but to me, it, it changed my world. Absolutely. Yeah. And when we come back, we're going to continue to talk about the art of loving and the world of Junica. Okay. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Dennis Wong, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Welcome back to Sister Power, and our title for today is The World of Junie Girl, The Art of Loving People, and my very, very special guest, my close sister, is June Dennis, and we're talking about the art of loving, and, uh, the art of loving people. And my question to you, what would you say to others who wanted to improve their own art of loving people? I would say find your passion and extend it to others. The, the beauty of, of this singular mission, and that's what I call it, because this is my mission statement, but I know that it fits everybody that breathes. So I might be the one that starts it, but I'm certainly not the one that's gonna grow it into the, the mushroom I want it to be. But what I've learned is that 
I'll give you a quote from Philippians 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to read it to you. Okay. Just to make sure I get it right. But to love is my heart. And that's everybody's heart. And to encourage is my gift. And everybody has a gift. So Philippians 2, 3, 4. Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4 says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each other esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. That sums it up, the art of loving people. And if I may add, another beauty is that you don't have to get dressed up, Ooh. you don't have to make an appointment, and you don't need a PowerPoint presentation. You know, it's so simple. If we can just get beyond, you know, ourselves. Yes. It really is because it's about us. We must learn that skill, the art of loving people. It is so critical in this day and age, and it crosses all lines. It's like music. Everybody loves music. You don't even have to speak the language, but there's just something that makes you feel good about the music. That's what love is. Love is that way. And, you know, there's a picture coming up of the, of the three of us at another event that we did at the Honolulu Design Center. And there you are. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle. And Anne Murata, Anne Murata. Uh -huh. um, the marketing genius. And the theme for this event was be phenomenal or be forgotten. Mm -hmm. and, and I like the point of, I think Maya Angelou says, it's not what you say, it's how you make I don't know exactly how she mm -hmm, said yeah. it, but it's how when you leave, how, how did you make, make that pe people person feel. feel? Yes. Yeah. And that's what love is all about. Right. It doesn't mean that, oh, I'm in love with you. Right. But love can be shown in so many, many ways. ways. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a kindness. It's, it's compassion. You know, the truth is we are all born with it. We really are born good. We choose to put, we choose to d redirect that, if I can say. But the truth is we're just born with love. But when you're young and you're honing your life, your mother, your father, your sister, or brother, I, I have to always go back to that. How do you want to raise this life? How do you want it to blossom? How do you want it to flower? It can be good or it can be bad. It can be negative or it can be positive. It can be all the way, it can be halfway. But whoever is putting that into you, it's their responsibility. And then when you get it, it's your responsibility. That's the reason I, I emphasize that it is a singular mission. We don't need a 501c3 to push it through. Do you know what I mean? It's just right. you wake up every morning and you make the decision to be the best that you can be and look for that in people. And something that I've learned from just listening to um, other experts and i don't consider myself an expert but when you smile it makes you feel good when you laugh it makes you feel it good does, does when you it? hug it makes you feel good i mean who doesn't want that so stop fighting stop cursing people out stop giving somebody the you know that's not you know, attitude attitude i think yeah. that we would think giving attitude is cute yeah no it is not and there is a saying about there are far more muscles when you frown, yeah. that you, you utilize. Then when you then, smile. And then when you smile at someone. Yeah. There it's, needs to be more emphasis on that. We need to talk more about that. We need to have more of that in the schools. We need our kids to understand that. You know, it's, it's, it's nature. It's just natural for us to. You look at two little kids. And you see these on Facebook often. You'll see kids, like you'll see a little black kid, and you'll see a white kid, and you'll see a Hispanic kid, and you'll see an Asian. And they're all together. They could care less. Yeah. They don't know nothing about any of that. They're not looking at them going, oh, I'm not going to play with you, because they just, it's just in their nature to love. And if we could just get back to that and grow that up, it, it, it's like water on this earth. It would change things. There would be great harmony. And... Um, Speaking of harmony, my husband and I just recently came back from Yellowstone, and we did Montana and Idaho and Wyoming. And one of the things that I love so much that I came back feeling so rested was the harmony mm. in nature and so much water. Without water, we don't survive. Yeah. There's so much water, there's water everywhere. That's what we all have to be to one another. We have to be the love water so that we can grow and nurture one another and be a blessing to one another. 
It's about blessing others and being blessed. And that's the way I believe. Yeah, I think that people think that extending uh, the kind word or showing love is a sign of weakness. Mm. And it really is a sign of strength it and is. confidence. It is. And then when you are confident within yourself and you're not afraid to speak to that person. Right. And it, you may be rejected, but there's so much going on in people's lives. It, it's not personal. Don't take it personally. Right. Right. You just never know. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's going on with that other person. Just in your heart, have a desire to just be about, be you as the best you can be, but just be kind, you yeah. know, just be kind. You don't have to go out of your way and do anything. A smile, I tell you, I'm smiling at people all the time, and sometimes I get it back, and sometimes I don't, you know, and when I don't get it back, I kind of feel sad for them, but I don't know yeah. where they are. Yes. I don't even know if they can see me. I don't know if they're even looking at me, but it doesn't matter. It feels good, and it's the right thing to do. And that's the other thing. We have to get back to doing the right thing, not just because you want to. There is right and there is wrong, and that's the right thing to do. So give us some, you know, we're, we're toward the end, but give us some words of encouragement well, that you would like to share with the audience. Well, you know, my dad used to always say, you know, you do what I tell you to do, not what I do. Now, my father was an alcoholic, as I said, and that illness caused him to make a lot of bad decisions. But I love my dad. I found the good in my dad. I learned that from my dad. I loved him. How could I not love my father? I mean, I know people can, but I didn't want to not love him. So I had to figure it out. And what I learned is that if you just... Look at people and realize they make mistakes. You know, humble yourself before them. You don't have to always be the last word or the first word. Just relax, get out of the way, and see what you can do to be a blessing, to be a difference maker in your circle of influence, to be kind and compassionate. Instead of looking at it like, oh, no, look at it like, so, well, okay, maybe. You know, just give it a shot. And the first time you do it and you get past yourself, it feels good. It, it really does. It does. And, you know, we have one more picture <coughs> that uh, marches Women's History Month. <coughs> Excuse and me. And it was about <coughs> making a difference. Mm. And we honored six or seven women, and they told their stories. And it was just so wonderful. Yes. Many <coughs> proclamations. And, and it was just so much fun. It was so much giving. And and, and loving each other. And as someone said, there was a lot of networking going on in that room. And you know, I have to say this too, being that I visit now, I lived here and got married here, but I visit now, Hawaii without Hawaiians, it's not possible. And there was such a huge population. And the, the family, that, the two women that we honored in that family, I can't remember their names. Of. Miliana yeah. and Manolani yeah. Meyer. And they come from a beautiful family of very smart women, their parents. You know, there was just such a, a kind, compassionate, humbling spirit throughout that entire room. Yes. And it was people, when they left, they were like so happy. Now that's an event. I loved it. I enjoyed do, putting it together with you, but even more, I loved it that when the people came, they felt like they got, for lack of another word, they got their money's worth. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're talking about giving, you know, we love to give you and I, you're always bringing me something. I'm I, always absolutely. bringing you something. Yeah. But my, I have a client, Dr. Kimberly Kelly, and I was telling her about you, oh. and she wanted me to give you this book. She's been on the show, oh. The Road to Mana, oh. Finding Healing, Happiness, and Power on the Road to Life. And this is a book that I think that everyone should um, have. have. Well, have I'm this, certainly glad that I've got it. Thank book. you. Thank and this you. this is for you. Okay, I from appreciate Dr. that. Dr. Kimberly Kelly. Oh, I'm looking forward and to getting into that. I have to give you... A okay. special <laughs> gift, Sister, Sister Power T-shirt. That's right. This is a special collection. Thank you. Thank this you. This is for you. See, if I had known, I could have worn it on the show uh, today. Well, we're going to take a picture together, <laughs> and we're going to show the, uh, the audience this. And, and this has been just so much fun. Well, I'm just so glad that I could be here 
and to share that. I mean, you're giving me this opportunity is such a blessing because you don't know who's going to hear you. You don't know who's watching. You don't know who's going to see. You don't know who you might touch today. It's all in the world of Junie Girl. Oh, all in the world. All Judy in the world girl. Judy girl. Let's show that uh, logo <laughs> one more time thank you, before thank we you. close. <laughs> the world of Junie Girl, and I love that. And you said the art of loving people. And I want to give credit to my graphic designer, Tanya Lida of Lida Graphics. This is a dear friend of mine I've known for many years. And there again, this is my friend, just like you. Yeah. We're all connected. And she came up with my logo because she knows me. I didn't plan that. I didn't figure that out. I really didn't do it. She did it, and then I connected with it, and it's perfect for me. She just knew what she was doing, so I'm grateful to Tanya Light of Light of Graphics. Yeah, I enjoy working with her as well. And June, 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 my dear friend, <laughs> thank you so very You're so much welcome. Thank for you. being a special guest on Sister Power. I just totally enjoy this, and, and I wish we had more, more time. More time, always. Yes. Let, let me do one last thing. Let me just leave with a blessing. All and right. this is, uh, and I'll just end with this. And this is a Proverbs eleven twenty five, and it simply is, a generous man will prosper, and he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. I like That's that. The Say end that, of that to the camera, right there. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Oh, I love that. Isn't that nice? I love that. And in closing, Sister Power's vision is that women everywhere will learn to live as sisters, Amen. to respect each other's differences, to heal each other's wounds, to promote each other's progress, and to benefit from each other's knowledge. From all of us at Think Tech Hawaii and Sister Power, thank you for spending part of your day with us. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough.